Right? Good morning again, mga anak, grade 9. We will now have the continuation of our lesson, photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Take note that, again, this is one of the major topics in biological sciences. And aside from that, you'll be carry, carrying this one all throughout. Okay? Let's move forward to the inner membrane. Okay? Inner membrane regulates the movement of molecules in and out of the chloroplasts. We are still in the chloroplasts. Okay? Inner and outer membrane, we, we have two membranes in the chloroplast. Substances like carotenoids, the colored pigments. Remember the colored pigments? Okay, the orange color of your carrots, those are carotenoids or carotene, which are the source of yellow, orange, and red colors of many plants. Fatty acids and lipids are synthesized in the inner membrane of the chloroplasts. Outer membrane, okay? This is permeable to small ions and molecules, but not with the large proteins. Okay. Stroma. Stroma contains enzymes essential in the process of photosynthesis. Okay. If you're going to examine um, the form of stroma, okay, it looks like a what? You look at the stroma. Okay. It looks like a a capsule, a storage, okay, of the thylakoid and the granum or grana, okay. Again, the thylakoid are the discs, okay. This is where the, the actual light-dependent reaction occurs because with the thylakoid, you can have the thylakoid membrane, the one that covers the thylakoid, okay. The thylakoid membrane contains now the, your pigment chlorophyll and the photosystems. Later on, we'll discuss about it, right, in the light-dependent reaction. Okay. Again, stroma contains enzymes essential in the process of photosynthesis. The stroma is involved in the synthesis of organic molecules from carbon dioxide and water because in the stroma, the light-independent light reaction occurs. Okay. This is where the enzymes extract the carbon from carbon dioxide. Remember the carbon dioxide, okay? The carbon dioxide is a combination, okay? This is a compound which, comp which is composed of carbon and oxygen, okay? Now, the carbon is actually absorbed in the process and oxygen is released as a byproduct of photosynthesis, okay? and combine it with oxygen and hydrogen to produce a simple carbohydrate molecule during the light independent reactions of photosynthesis. Okay, In the light independent reaction, by the way, this is where the carbon dioxide is being used in the process, maximizing the carbon and eliminating the oxygen as a byproduct. Thylakoid, okay? It contains chlorophylls, the light, absorbing pigment and in which light dependent reactions of photosynthesis occurs okay this is where the light energy is captured and converted into atp the okay. atp stands for adenosine triphosphate atp is the energy currency of the cell okay this is how we actually use or this is now the currency that our cell is actually uh, are actually using atp adenosine triphosphate so it has actually three phosphate in one adenosine molecule. It, because it is three phosphate, we are usually using the phosphate and the NADPH. The NADPH, okay, is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate, okay, which are chemical energy stor storage molecules. Again, this NADPH. Usually, the body converts it into ATP again for consumption because this is energy storage. Thylakoid lumen, okay? The fluid-filled compartment enclosed by thylakoid membrane where water molecule is broken down and oxygen is released in the process is called photolysis, okay? There is a 
remember that when you when you have the light dependent reaction okay you're using electrons okay you're using now the ions okay in order to power up the electron transport chain of the light dependent reaction okay? because you consume these electrolytes these electrons these ions you need to replenish it with another ion found in water okay water now in the process will actually split up okay again absorbing hydrogen ions in the process and eliminating oxygen in the process the byproduct of photosynthesis again the photolysis okay this is now the breaking down of water into oxygen and hydrogen okay which occurs in the light dependent reactions of photosynthesis yeah, don't worry now, the, the whole process there actually i posted it um earlier than i actually gone with the with the module so the purpose why i need to post it in order for you to have a heads up of what are these processes all about okay a lot of my students from last last school year tend to contact me because of this because they forgot the discussion okay by the way i have this discussion when i was still in grade six until now i can still clearly remember things over because this is my interest grana a stock of thylakoid in the chloroplast which contains carotenoids and chlorophyll right and are the sites of light reactions or light dependent reactions of photosynthesis okay, these are stocks of thylakoids if you're going to stock all the thylakoids you can actually create a granum or grana granum singular grana right lamile okay make up the structural framework of chloroplasts keeping all components in a safe distance from one another and maximizing the efficiency of the organelle. This is for protection, okay? Remember that your, again, your chloroplasts is exposed in ultraviolet rays. But again, the, the, the light from the outside, okay, will be, again, absorbed by the plants, but only 2% of Okay, only 2% of the photon will be absorbed by the plants. The rest are really harmful for the plants, especially nowadays that um, our ozone layer depleted already and there is no protection at all. Okay. Stages of photosynthesis. Okay. Photosynthesis for us before is just an ordinary um, plant cycle. Okay. This is just the definition is just the, the food making process of plant. But take a look at this one. Photosynthesis is a complex process that involves a series of reactions. Okay. Converting light energy from the sun into chemical energy, which is stored in organic compounds. Okay. Your organic compounds, glucose. The chemical formula for glucose is C6 or carbon 6, H12, hydrogen 12. And O6, oxygen 6. Okay, C6, H12, O6. That is the chemical formula for your glucose. And oxygen are generated from carbon dioxide and water. Okay, water is being absorbed in the light dependent reaction, and carbon dioxide is being absorbed in the light dependent reaction. Light independent reaction, rather. The process can be summarized with the chemical equation below. Okay. Six carbon molecule or six CO2 molecules plus six water molecule. Okay. Yields with light energy and chlorophyll or your, um, your photon. Photon is a, a, a currency also of sun rays or sunlight. Photon and chlorophyll. And then the result is, okay, or the product is C6H2O6 or your glucose plus six oxygen atom. 
or oxygen atoms. Again, six carbon molecules, six, or six CO2 molecules or carbon dioxide molecules. This is the raw materials plus six water molecules yields with light energy and chlorophyll. The products is a sugar, your glucose, which is C6H2O6, plus six atoms of oxygen this is the summary okay how do we get those how can we have c6h of o6 in the process this is the big question okay let's take a look at the process photosynthesis occurs in two types of reactions okay the light dependent reactions and the light independent reactions okay take note that light independent reactions can occur anytime it doesn't mean that um it can only occur during night time. No. The, the light independent reactions can occur anytime, simultaneous with the light dependent reactions. Okay. The difference is the light independent reaction don't actually use light in the process. Instead, it uses carbon dioxide and the NAD pH. Light dependent reactions require light and occur in the thylakoids. Okay. On the other hand, light independent reactions do not require light. Okay, other term for light independent reaction is dark reactions and the Calvin cycle. Okay, because it was discovered by Melvin Calvin. Okay, do not require light and occur in the stroma. Okay, remember the stroma, the capsule that surrounds the thylakoids, thylakoid membrane, the stack of the thylakoid membranes. Okay. The chart that follows compares the two reactions, okay? Light independent reactions take place in the thylakoid. Okay? Take place in the stroma of the chloroplasts. Great. Right. Uh, light dependent reactions take place in the thylakoid. Okay? While light independent reactions is wrong takes place in the stroma of the chloroplasts, okay? Light-dependent reactions convert light energy into chemical energy, which is ATP and not pH. Light-independent reactions use the ATP, okay? To convert CO2 into carbohydrates, okay? Light-dependent reactions split H2O or water to the process of photolysis and releases water in the atmosphere in the process because that is the byproduct of photosynthesis, okay? In the light independent reaction, it returns ADP in inorganic phosphate and not pH. ADP is adenine diphosphate, okay? Because it is already used in the process, okay? It is already used in the process. Once we use the ATP, it will become ADP because we use the phosphate part of the adenosine triphosphate. It will become now adenosine diphosphate. Okay? And NAD P plus. Okay? NAD P plus stands for NAD nicotinamide adenine the nucleotide phosphate, but we use the phosphate group. Okay? It now become NAD P plus. Okay? Characteristic of light. Okay, talking about light. What's with the light? Okay. The sun provides light energy in the form of photons. Okay. Which required in the photosynthesis. Green plants and other photosynthetic organisms, because there are some um, groups of organisms that can actually perform photosynthesis other than plants. For example, algae. Okay. What else? Um Photosynthetic bacteria, okay? They can actually perform photosynthesis in the process. Such as some algae and bacteria contains chlorophyll, which capture and convert light energy from the sun into chemical energy used to synthesize carbohydrates, which is, or your glucose, which is C6H2O6, take note, from water, which is H2O, and carbon dioxide, which is CO2. 
There you go. Light is a small portion of the radiant energy that comes from the sun. Okay. Again, light consists of both particle wave and a particle and wave properties. As a particle, light consists of units of energy called photons. Okay, we usually use photons. And as a form of energy or electromagnetic energy, light travels in a wave. Okay, remember that your light needs what? A medium. It is an electromagnetic wave. Okay, this is now your radiation. Okay, that is why you can actually feel the heat because light travels in electromagnetic energy in a wave form. You can feel it. That is the reason behind. But in, in, in light-dependent reactions or, or in photosynthesis, we, use, we usually use photons in the process. Okay? Do you have any questions so far before we continue? Have you heard about this already in your previous years? Yes. That's great. That's good, Jillian. Because um, this is just a continuation of what you had learned in your previous years. Again, I, I had learned this one and I was still in grade six before in our curriculum. Okay. A photon is a basic particle, the unit of light, and all other forms of electromagnetic energy. Okay. If you have questions, clarifications from your previous discussions, if you have um, knowledge about those, just let me know, please. No? Please interrupt in the class and talk about it. All right? Do I make that clear? Everybody? Yes, yes. sir. Right. Let's move forward. The distance between consecutive points of wave is wavelength. We already know this one. This is actually a topic in grade six. No, no, in grade seven, rather. The longer the wavelength, the less energy or spectrum of light contains, or it contains. The shorter the wavelength, the more energy it contains. Just like when you actually waggle a rope, okay? If you're going to waggle a rope slower, you will actually create a longer, okay, a bigger wavelength. But if you're going to move it faster, you're creating now a shorter wavelength. Okay. Meaning to say that it contains more energy because it is now shorter. Right? Chlorophyll molecules absorb light at the wavelength between 400 to 500 nanometers. Okay? The violet to blue. And 600 to 700 nanometers orange to red. These wavelengths are essential in driving photosynthesis. Okay, hence, chlorophyll reflects green light. Okay? Parts of the plant that contains chlorophyll appear green. That is the reason behind. It reflects green light. Okay? Chloroplasts in, in cells of green plants absorb light in which photons have the right amount of energy and use to raise electrons of chlorophyll molecules in a high energy level without harming organelles during the photosynthesis, okay? The light energy is converted into chemical energy of ATP and NADPH, okay? Again, ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate and NADPH stands for nicotinamide adenine then nucleotide phosphate. Let's make it, let's move faster. Photosystems. Okay, a photosystem is a mass of chlorophyll and other pigment molecules bound by protein in the telecode membranes of the chloroplasts. Again, if you have questions, please raise it directly, right? It absorbs light energy and converts it into chemical energy during photosynthesis, okay? A photosystem is composed of a reaction center, okay? Without reaction center, we cannot consider that one as a photosystem, okay? Surrounded by several light capturing components consisting of various pigment molecules bound by proteins. Okay, the number of virus pigment molecules enable a photosystem to capture more light for the reaction center. Okay, 
The reaction center of a photosystem consists of a pair of chlorophyll A molecules and other molecules molecule cap capable of accepting electrons called the primary electron acceptor. Okay, let's dig up deeper with this. We are now entering the light dependent reactions. Okay, the pair of chlorophyll A molecules in the reaction center is the primary electron donor to the electron transport chain. Okay, the pair uses light energy in, in activating one of their electrons into high energy level. The electron is captured by a primary electron acceptor. The capturing of the electron is the first step in the light dependent reactions. The photosystem should capture okay, the photon in order to start up or to power up the light dependent reactions. Otherwise, there is the light dependent reactions will not occur. This is how important the photosystems are. Okay. There are two kinds of photosystems in the chloroplast, namely the photosystem one or the PS1 and the photosystem two or the PS2. Okay. Photosystems are named in order of their discovery, but photosystem two functions first in the light dependent reactions. So take note that we will usually start in photosystem two in the light dependent reactions because it powers first. Okay. Each photosystem has nearly identical chlorophyll A molecules in the reaction center. Okay. A chlorophyll A molecule of photosystem one is called the P700. Okay. In, chloro in photosystem one, we have P700 since it absorbs light having the, the wavelength of 700 nanometers, whereas the chlorophyll A molecule of photosystem two is called P680. Okay, since it absorbs light having the wavelength of 680 nanometers. Okay, please take note of those. Again, PS1 has P700. Okay, the chlorophyll A there is P700. And PS2 has P680. The chlorophyll A there is P680 because it absorbs 680 nanometers. Here comes the chart. These are the chart that summarizes the difference between photosystem one and photosystem two. Okay, photosystem one located at the surface or the outer surface. Okay, the outer surface of the grana and thylakoid. Okay, photosystem one located in the outer surface. Photosystem two located in the inner. Okay, photosystem one is located in the outer and in the inner surface of the grana and thylakoid. Because this is just in line. They're, they're, they're with the same line, actually. Photosystem two is again located in the outer and the inner surface of the grana and thylakoid membrane. Okay. Photosystem one has a chlorophyll A called P700, and photosystem 2 has a, a chlorophyll A called P680, the same. Let's take a look at the, 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 the data or the, the flow of these photosystems, okay? The synthesis of ATP molecules. Why do we need to synthesize ATP molecules? Because these are the energy currency of the cell. In the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis, adenosine triphosphate or ATP is produced in the process called photophosphorylation. Okay, in the photophosphorylation, okay, we actually gather a lot of ATPs. Okay, the ATPs there will be used in the process in the light-independent reactions and in the Krebs cycle. Photophosphorylation is a chemical process in which the phosphate group is added to ADP or adenosine diphosphate to form ATP. If we we're gonna add, again, if we will gonna add a phosphate group in ADP, okay, it will actually form 
adenosine triphosphate. That is the process of photophosphorylation, as simple as that. Okay? A high energy carrier molecule using the light energy. Okay, again, photophosphorylation is just a process or a chemical process of adding phosphate in ADP. So we, we did just add a phosphate group in adenosine diphosphate to create adenosine, adenosine triphosphate. Okay? Photophosphorylation begins when chlorophyll A molecules are activated in the presence of light. Okay? Again, photophosphorylation begins when chlorophyll A in your photosystems is activated in the presence of light. The electrons from the outermost orbits of the molecules are released, carrying high energy. Later on, I will discuss it um, step by step on how this actually this process actually um doing the energized electrons are accepted by the various electron carriers one after another during the process electrons lose energy which is used for the synthesis of atp a high energy or high energy carrier organic compound which is used to synthesize simple carbohydrate molecules from carbon dioxide in the light independent reactions of photosynthesis Okay, photophosphorylation may occur by either cyclic or linear process. Okay, this is the light independent reactions. Okay, this is the one I had created and posted um, weeks before in order for you to familiarize, right? Okay, this is the entire sequence or process of light dependent reactions. As you can see, okay. We started with photosystem 2, the P680, okay? When light or photon struck photosystem 2, it activates now it activates photosystem 2, okay? And excites the electrons in photosystem 2. Right? The electrons then becomes excited and again go to the electron transport chain in your Electron acceptors, this, these are your electron acceptors, and goes to the photosystem one. Okay. Again, when photons strike photosystem one, it activates the electrons. The electrons become excited again and converted ADP into ATP in the, in the process of photophosphorylation and created also NADPH. Okay. Again, when the, the water, you remember the water there? When water is actually um, strikes with photon, photolysis happens and oxygen is being released as a byproduct. Hydrogen ions will be, will, will be, um, will be staying in the thylakoid membrane to create a, a hydrogen or ion gradient which again activates the ATP synthase to create more ATP and more NADPH, okay? Again, in the light dependent reactions, we have two photosystems there, okay? The photosystem two, which is, which contains a chlorophyll A, P680, and a photosystem one, which has a chlorophyll A, P700, okay? When light, or when a photon strike photosystem two, okay, it excites electrons from photo 